So now we have the last uh, result for this chapter, which is that if we have a nilpotent operator, then V has a basis for which the matrix is strictly upper triangular. So in other words, uh, the di it's zero everywhere along the diagonal, and it's zero everywhere underneath the diagonal. And the only place you can have non-zero stuff is strictly above the diagonal up here. And so the idea of the proof is actually not bad, but writing it down is a bit of a jerk. Um, like, yeah, so you can, you can tell this by uh, the fact that Axler decided to take a sort of a, a, a gentle and conversational approach to this proof. I opted to try something that's a little bit more precise, but um, eh, the notation is not the nicest. So if double subscripts give you indigestion, maybe you want to skip this one and look at the one in the book. Well, not skip it, but read the one in the book first and then take a look at this one. But let's see, let's see how we go. Okay, so we're gonna follow um, the proof in the book pretty closely. So let's uh, start with, um, we're gonna build the basis and then show that the basis gives us a matrix of the nice form. So we're gonna start with a basis of uh, the null space of N. And so this will be V1 um, up to uh, some point VK1. So that's going to be um, our, our first sort of chunk of basis vectors. And then, and then we're going to um, extend this to a basis of uh, the null space of N squared. And so remember, remember that um, we saw that the null space of t to the k is contained in the null space of t to the k plus one. Uh, so we, I'm just extending up to the, the next subspace, right? So we've got those basis vectors that we uh, collected at the first stage, and then we've got the next batch. So the one that comes after the k plus one is the k uh, sorry the one that comes after the k one th is the k one th plus one vector, and then that's going to go up until we get to and I'm going to call it v sub k two. Um, and then we keep on doing this, so <clears throat> um, all of these vectors here are killed off by n squared. These ones are killed off by n squared, but they're actually already killed off by n. And we keep on building up. Uh, a basis that has this property. So the last batch are killed by raising n to the jth power, and the ones before that got killed off at some um, earlier step. So, uh, so we're going to continue until we have a basis for all of v. And let me just point out v here. We're thinking of v as the null space of n raised to the dim v, right? If you raise n to a high enough power, it's going to wipe off everything on the block because it's nil potent. Okay, so we've got v1 up to vk1, and then we've got the next thing vk1 plus 1 all the way up to vk2, and so on and so forth and so there's v sub k3 and v sub k4 rounding off all those ones and then somewhere up at the end we end up with um uh v to the um let's say km is the last one okay um so let's see so now this is um Uh, this is this is a basis for um, the entire vector space. So if we stopped at some point, so if we had uh, if we went up to just v k j, then this is a basis for the null space n to the j for some j less than or equal to the dimension of v. Yeah? Okay. So that holds for, um, and I guess I, sh I can say this is um, 
for j equals 1, 2, up to m. And then uh, yeah, OK, good enough. So oh, actually, you know what? Sorry, wrong one. n. So that's the dimension of the whole vector space. There we go. OK, so then we are going to um, consider the matrix of n uh, with respect to uh, this basis. OK. So um, <clears throat> then let's see now. So if we look at one of these uh, one of these basis vectors, so V is going to be one of these basis vectors from the, the first uh, cohort there. So, so these are the ones that we, we built at step one. Um, then we have that um, V is in the basis of uh, the null space of N. So that implies that n times v is equal to 0. Uh, and that means that in terms of um, the, the, the coordinates, that's 0 v1 plus 0 v2 plus out to 0 v k1. And so what that means is um, all of the entries uh, in the first column, because we're looking at uh, the Oh, I didn't say that, did I? Well, yeah, no, actually, for, for all of the first columns, so for the first K1 columns, all of the entries are going to be equal to zero. So that means A looks like, and then we've got 0, and then a big question mark. But so this is, this is for the, uh, the first K1 columns right here. So we definitely have that much. OK. Uh, and now we're going to proceed basically by induction on the power that we're raising the matrix to. So now let's suppose that um, for j strictly less than L, all columns corresponding to um, the basis vectors of n to the j are 0, uh, and let's say on and below the diagonal. By the way, remember, k1 could be equal to 1, right? So it could be that like none of this stuff is actually equal. here. There's just one column of zeros, and then in the next row we're already on to the part of the basis of n squared, right? Okay, but um, <coughs> but it's definitely enough. Okay, so so let's see. So this is our, our inductive hypothesis. And so we're going to use this to show that um, for the columns corresponding to uh, the elf, so n to the l, it also is going to be, uh, the entries are going to be 0 on and below the diagonal. And so let's take uh, v to be now any one of these initial basis vectors up until uh, and including stuff from the lth stage. So, so this one here is a uh, 
basis for the null space of n to the L. Okay. Um, <coughs> okay, so if V is in the basis of the null space of n to the L, then um, n to the L applied to V is going to be equal to zero. And that implies that um, n v is in the null space of n to the l minus 1. And so that's the span of uh, v1 up through v sub k l minus 1. OK. So in other words, if, um, if v is in the span of, sorry, if V is one of these guys, then NV is in the span of some like strictly smaller subset right here because uh, K sub L minus one comes before K sub L. Okay, then what does that mean? That means then that uh, if we look at NV, so we're trying to work out what the coordinates, uh, the entries of N are, right? So what does n do for a, a column this far along? Well, it's going to look like a1, v1, plus da, 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 um, a sub k l minus 1, v k l minus 1. Told you you're going to hate it. Um, and then all the other ones are equal to 0. So this is v. And now this is, so what comes after k sub l minus 1? Well, it's k sub l minus 1 plus 1. Um, and all the rest in that lineup, uh, so we're going to get up to, and then here we've got 0, that's times uh, v sub kl, and then 0 times v sub uh, kl plus 1 up to vkm. Okay, so so like I said, notation is a bear, but here's the idea. NV is in the span of the first few, right? So that means it's a linear combination of the first few and the corresponding uh, coordinates for all of the rest are equal to zero. That's the key idea, right? Okay, and so let's see now if we if we look at this, we will see here that uh, this uh, yes, this zero right here corresponds to the one on the diagonal, and then these ones here correspond to things that are below the diagonal. So <clears throat> that gives us zeros on the diagonal and below. So the columns of A corresponding to um, the basis of null space N to the L are 0 on and below the diagonal. Whew. And that's it. We're done. We did it. You get a box. You deserve it. That was some work. <laughs>